Okay, so welcome and thank you all for joining us for today's Lunch and Learn discussion. I'm Corey Miller, the Executive Director of the Cabbage Patch, and I'll be your host for today's session. So this afternoon, we're going to be focusing on our fantastic Family Development Department. And we have with us uh, two gentlemen, uh, the Reverend Dr. Calvin R. Holloway, the Manager of the Counseling and Family Development. He has served at the Patch for almost 30 years. I think September will be his 30-year anniversary. And he is also the pastor of Second Baptist Church in Fairfield. And we also have Mr. Doug Holm, um, also with the Divinity Masters, and is a licensed marriage and family therapist. And Doug serves as our senior family support specialist. And he has been at the Patch for 18 years. And so between the two of them, these guys have given nearly 50 years of their professional life supporting Patch families and youth in a number of ways. So without further ado, I think we can turn it over to our family development leaders. So Calvin, you wanna, are you guys gonna start? Awesome, uh, Doug's gonna, I guess, share our present, but we're gonna talk about uh, how we're helping families, especially during this uh, pandemic deal with the twists and turns of life. And he's gonna start out by talking about our case management part of our program. Well, um, welcome everyone. Um, a big part of what we do in family development is uh, case management, trying to help families uh, um, work their way up from uh, where they are in life to, to the next level. And we do this through a variety of things. Uh, a lot of this um, uh, lately has been uh, helping folks just develop a nice resume um, you'd be surprised how many people don't really uh, have the means to do that or, or know how it's supposed to set up. Um, job search strategies, everything is online anymore. Um, when Calvin and I first started in this line of work, you could still fill out a job application with paper, but it's, it's not like that anymore. And oftentimes you have to have online profiles and, and uh, you attach your resume to your job uh, application. And then just trying to gently uh, you know, at first talk with folks, where would you like to be in five years uh, and try to figure out where they would like to be. Um, but a lot of times uh, for us, especially during a pandemic, it's just helping folks find folks, uh, help folks find a job, keep that job for nine to 12 months and then move on to the next job. Um, a lot of our folks, just when you live on the edge, like our families do because of lack of income, uh, you can find yourself with some debt problems. So we're trying to help folks uh, get a free copy of their credit report each year. We like to use annualcreditreport.com. Uh, we collect budgets during Christmas time for the families that we help. And we, Calvin and I go through those budgets and try to find, you know, if we see any warning signs and just try to call those folks up and talk to them and, and figure out how to manage their debt. Um, uh, it, it, it can be a lot of debt for some of our families, uh, even, um, you just would be surprised the amount of school debt we're seeing. Um, this will be a big focus for us starting in uh, April. Uh, we, uh, because of Jesse's help and others on staff, uh, we're able to get a very nice size uh, grant uh, to help folks with the expungement of their backgrounds. Um, a lot of people don't know that um, maybe um, you might have been a different person back in the day, but if you had any misdemeanors or even some felonies, those things stay on there forever even if it was a dismissed charge, it stays there and you have to ask to get it expunged. So we, uh, we try to help them through that process because it can be a bit overwhelming. We pay for all the costs with the state police check and then the, the cost of getting things expunged. We go with them to the hall of justice, help them with fill out the paperwork, explain the process, basically just trying to walk through it with them. Um, Calvin and I are big believers in the ministry of introduction um, and if we don't know the answer, we try to find out who in town does. And so we'll refer them to other agencies. We try to keep up good dialogue with different people. And uh, we're also lately, it's a new form of social, social work for us, but it's the technological challenges, um, applying for low income home energy assistance, for instance, uh, there's an online application. And if you're a grandmother that doesn't really have a PC or know how to use a PC, we do those applications with them over the phone. And um, it's, it's a whole new digital divide um, that the pandemic has really shown how big it is. 
We have a little story to go with uh, case management. This is uh, Daryl Drika, uh, one of our families that we've known a long time. And uh, when we first met Daryl Drika, she was struggling just to stay employed or find a, a job that paid a wage to, to cover basic expenses. She was dealing with some health problems. Uh, we helped her with a resume, helped her come up with a, a job search strategy. And um, she got that first job and it's just like it ignited uh, a light within her and then she moved on from that to other jobs. And, and now really the only assistance that she needs from us is, is usually just around Christmas time. And occasionally during the pandemic needs some food assistance, but she has a son, Flanoil, that's very active in our rec program. He loves high adventure and our biking program. She also has a daughter uh, who's not one of our scholars, but she is a college student at Kentucky State. She's a junior this year. So, um, but Gerald Rica has taken the help that we gave her and just kind of ran with it. Our next program, thank you, Doug, is our patch parent program. And um, it meets every third Thursday of the month. We have a full meal that's prepared uh, by uh, some great volunteers from Southeast Christian Church. Uh, Tim and Julie Stevens, and they have some friends and their family that come along and they prepare the meal um, and serve the meal at uh, no cost to the cabbage patch. They cover the cost and they prepare the meal and they clean up and uh, they just love serving and love the cabbage patch um, as, as well. Uh, we also have different topics and helpful information um, from different organizations or agencies each month. And some of the ones we've had previously Family Scholar House, uh, Angela Wilson. There's a picture of me and her and Dana at the top, who's another one of our parents. Uh, Angela Wilson is a social worker at Family Scholar's House. She also has uh, a child that attends our recreation program uh, as well. And she has also been a, uh, well, of course, she has been or still is a patch parent. And uh, she's doing very well. Only she hasn't had to have any help in the last couple of years. I think we've helped her once, maybe for Christmas. And then we have uh, uh, Nancy Brook, who is the executive director of, of NAMI. And she comes every year uh, and does a great job as one of our speakers. And uh, we had a few months ago, uh, Bea, Beautiful As You Are, it's a great program for young girls. And uh, Tish uh, Frederick. Uh, is the founder of that program, loves the Cabbage Patch. She always brags about the program. And I think she works with the girls here uh, in our education recreation department. And then we, every year we have Project Warm, trying to teach our families on how to winterize their homes, how to save money. Uh, and the supplies are brought here. And there's also uh, a workshop that they have to attend and go through. And there's a picture of Frank uh, and another volunteer from Project Warm and Dana in that picture. We also have a story uh, to go along with uh, Patch Parents and that's Marsha Collins. Um, we had a legal aid will clinic and she received a will, um, a power of attorney and living will, cost of a will that saved her between $300 and $1,000. Uh, a little bit about Marsha Collins. She is retired from Mary Hearst she served as a foster mom. I think also her home has served as a safe home for kids that were having a lot of issues and it's hard to find places for them to, uh, uh, to foster care. And so what she, she did was she opened up her home to this family uh, with siblings. There's a daughter and I mean, sister and three brothers and they couldn't find any other homes for her. They couldn't be adopted. So she adopted them herself and they come to the cabbage patch and they're very active and they did a story on her I think a few years ago uh, about Mother's Day uh, about her and, and who she is she's just a great person uh, she doesn't need any help other than Christmas she loves basically bringing the kids here to the education program and the recreation program as well and she does attend our patch parents meetings faithfully. on a regular basis faithfully We also just wanted to chat with you briefly about the different assistance programs that we offer. Um, as you can imagine, um, uh, since the pandem pandemic began, utility assistance, rent assistance, food pantry assistance have just been off the charts. Um, uh, food pantry, we went from giving out maybe 
a little over 800 bags of food uh, in any given year to, um, I think of last year was around 2,800 uh, bags of food. Um, it was just unbelievable. Um, but thanks to the sponsors, like a lot of you all, uh, we were able to keep up with the need. Um, we uh, also, a back to school program is a very big program for us. Last year was around uh, uh, close to 130 different kids um, children, teenagers, and even some college scholars that got some back to school assistance. Um, Jennifer had asked this, uh, and we looked it up, a typical backpack of school supplies. We're thinking um, parents are spending anywhere between $35 and $60 for a backpack and school supplies. With the older kids, we try to get them you know, heavy duty backpacks. Um, and so with the number of kids that we helped last year, we had uh, around 5,000 so $7,500 uh, worth of school supplies that were donated to the Cabbage Patch. And um, just putting you all on notice, we'll be reaching out to you all in June and July is when we start gathering all the supplies. But um, Dr. Polio has said that he wants the kids back in school five days a week in uh, this next school year. So we, uh, we will have a big need for school supplies this year. Christmas assistance uh, is the largest program that we do during the year. We begin on the, the planning for this in August and start signups with the families in September. Um, by the time Christmas gets here, Calvin and I have been there, done that. Um, but uh, last year we helped a record number of families. We helped 80 families, um, close to 295 different people. Um, these are families that we know and work with throughout the year. And uh, we had uh, over 30 different Christmas sponsors. Several of you all on this uh, meeting were sponsors. Thank you for helping. The average assistance, most of our families are a uh, parent with two or three kids. So you're talking around for financial help for the family, $350 to $450. Um, and I'm a, I'm a fis fiscal statistics guy. And so what I love about Christmas is that people don't start out January in the hole. Um, and they don't uh, borrow from rent or utility money for January to buy Christmas gifts. And uh, also just want to point out, these are not just all toys. A lot of these, the parents are just asking for clothing, winter clothing, coats, uh, shoes. Um, and then they'll say, you know, and if you can, you know, a toy or two would be wonderful or for the teenagers, a gift card. So, but for a lot of the families, Christmas assistance is when they get the kids their winter clothing. The story um, that we would just want to share with you, uh, the woman giving uh, Corey, our, our executive director of the bunny ears, is Tanya McAtee. Um, Calvin and I have known Tanya for a very long time. Uh, when I first came to Cabbage Patch, she had several children um, in grade school and teenagers that attended here and uh, grew up. Um, Tanya eventually uh, got a um, did the sweat equity and got a, a habitat home that Calvin and Tracy actually, I think, were there for the blessing ceremony. Um, she got married. Mac, her husband, is on the left. Uh, they met at the cab company. She's a, a dispatcher and Mac was a driver. And they're just two peas in the pod. And, um, and now uh, her oldest daughter, Sarah, has a child that comes here to, and is a member of our recreation program. But Tanya would take advantage of all the assistance that we would give. And, but each year it just got a little lesser and lesser. And, um, and her, her youngest just graduated from high school last year. So, uh, but she there again took the assistance that the Cabbage Patch gave her and just kind of ran with it. Also, I want to say about Tanya, her husband is a, a Cabbage Patch alumni. I think he came in the late 60s and 70s to the Cabbage Patch, and he's a two time a cancer survivor mm -hmm. as well. He comes to our Patch Parent meeting. So, lastly, what is success and, and progress? Well, it looks different. Uh, for different families and different people. But number one is being uh, employment, stable employment, um, having a, a roof over your head, housing. Um, and then uh, success is different for each person. Um, Just kind of wanted to show you, we, we like the theme with the road because we have families that are in different places on the road. Um, we have one parent, Miss Erin, down there in the corner. Erin's in a different part. You know, she has maintained her housing for a year, um, and that is a significant accomplishment for Erin. She's recently gotten employment at Norton Hospital, 
um, after her uh, 90 day um, trial period has the possibility of making $15 an hour with benefits. Um, Ms. Savanda, that's her and her two little cute kiddos. Um, she um, uh, takes advantage of back to school, Thanksgiving, Christmas assistance and the food pantry assistance. Um, sometimes what happens with our families is they become caregivers for others in their family. And she's become the caregiver of her nephew and then has a brother um, who's older that she also is caring for him as well. So sometimes um, folks get on the upward trajectory, but then things in life happen and they're tasked with more responsibilities and it, it, it's, it's a harder road for them. And it's nice that they can call Calvin and I up and get some extra assistance at those times. Um, Dana um, is in, that is her, you can't see the whole car, but she was the recipient of the, the car that we were able um, from Recycled Rides which is a program that we've been uh, affiliated with for a number of years. And um, Jennifer knows more of the details and how we got linked up with them. But uh, that is her and her daughter Nadira in their car. Um, and um, the, her car was about to, to go kaput. And she works at the doctor's office over across the river. And, you know, TARC service is, is not the best. Um, over there and so definitely needed the transportation that car was a life changer and the other families that have been recipients of those cars you know continue to when they see Calvin and I say that the, the car really made a difference and then Calvin's going to tell us a little bit about Michelle. Um, uh, Michelle is a alumni of Cabbage Patch grew up here her kids grew up here her niece and her sister they lived right across the street and uh, we've helped her with Christmas, back to school, lg &E, but she's uh, in a stage now where she doesn't need any help. And she's always referring other people to the Cabbage Patch. Her son, Juju, is a college scholar. Uh, her daughter is working at Norton and it's doing very well. Is also a patch kid. And also Michelle's working two jobs and she just shared with me actually today that Juju uh, just maybe getting a new job. Well, he has been offered a new job. He's just going through the background check and all of that, working uh, with the mayor. And he's also, uh, I think he's going to be the, uh, she said it's going to be the youth coordinator. Uh, he's going to work in the youth coordinator's office of, of safe and health for the neighborhood. So she's very excited, proud, and she just wanted to thank the Cabbage Patch for all of their help and things uh, with him. He's also planning on going on. He's working on his master's now. He's a college scholar. Here, the Cabbage Patch, and he's planning on getting his doctorate degree as well. Yeah, and so, Juju, we know him as Juju. His name is Javon. Uh, Javon will get his master's in social worker, social work from Kent School, and then uh, the, the kid is something else. He hung around. He's going to get a specialization in marriage and family therapy, which of course is very close to my heart. But um, and I keep joking with him. I think he needs to run for mayor someday. But that's a whole other discussion. So he's a fantastic And the PhD kid. is in uh, PhDs in public health, right? Yes. That's yeah. what he's looking at. Yeah. So proud. Yeah. And right now he's working at Mary Hurst. His mom said he's been bitten, I think, two times. So he's, he's just worlds. He kept his job until the, the new job he finally comes. So I told him that's good. That I told his mom that's great. So yeah. But there again, Michelle, and she combined her household with her sister Kim. They took the help that we gave and just kind of ran with it. And, um, and it has turned out really well for their family. Right, she started out in public housing. You know, Doug went over there and helped her with a computer that the Cabbage Patch donated and we've helped her for many years. So, yeah, done yeah, well. she did. And, and that's kind of our presentation, Jennifer. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, I think we're ready for questions. Well, here's a question. So Calvin and Doug, you all have been <clears throat> um, in family development for quite a while. Um, what, what, what do you think is the secret to the success that we have in this department? It's a good question. Well, in, in my line of work, Corey, in, in therapy, one of the things that um, when they look at what, what is successful therapy and what makes it go well for some people, it, the number one thing is relationships. If you believe you're a therapist, if you like your therapist and, and you believe they can help you, then, then you'll have good outcomes. And I think, uh, especially Calvin, I mean, I've got to be honest with you, I learned a lot from him. 
um, you 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 listen a lot and you talk less. And so we um, we try to just be very open what the families are saying. And when they call us out of the blue, all upset, you just try to be calm and be present. And then you work the problem. Um, so I think, you know, we don't, we're a small agency in town. We don't put out huge numbers, but we go deep. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of quality to what we do. We try. And then, uh, and we may give suggestions and folks may not want to take it and that's fine, but we'll continue to be there for them. Um, I think that's the other thing is that, you know, we've been blessed, uh, we're still here. We've been through the great recession. We've now been through the pandemic because of the diligence of, you know, the funders, Calvin and I were never laid off. Um, and so the families know that no matter what's going on in town, I can always call Mr. Mr. Calvin or Mr. Doug and they'll help me figure this out. That's what I would say. What would you say, Calvin? Uh, I'd say also, like you said, uh, they have to be a part of the solution and listening to them and letting them know, I mean, we can't do the work for them. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, it takes time and patience. Uh, I, I think back even with someone like Michelle, I, she, when I worked in the gym, uh, she was a little girl come to the gym across the street with her sister and all of her friends. And now to see her and see this third generation, even Juju, who was just a clown coming in, just always joking and all that. And now to see he's working on a PhD. And I'll never forget when he came, he told me, he says, I'm going to have your job one day when he was a little boy. And I thought he was a little cocky and that. <laughs> he, could. he could even be the director That's one day. Good. Good. Well, I think he told me that too. So <laughs> yeah, I think he probably told everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, Doug, you uh, alluded to, I think, uh, grandmothers uh, raising uh, some of our kids and the technology challenges. Number one, and you may not have hard stats on this, but just generally speaking, uh, what, how, what is the prevalence of that among our client base? And number two, what are some of the other challenges that the grandparents that are raising our kids, either you, you or Calvin, uh, are facing because uh, it is a fairly common occurrence, as I recall. Yeah, it's unfortunately becoming more common. It's a, it's at least 10 to 15 percent of our families. Uh, the kids are being raised by their grand grandparent. Um, and um, so you have a couple of issues. One is um, these folks, you know, they thought I, I was done raising my kids. And so now I've got to kind of take in these kids and start over. Um, raising these kids is different from how they raised their kids back in the day. Uh, no one foresaw that. Our, the grandparents might have to learn how to use a computer or learn about virtual learning. Um, and then just the prevalence of violence also um, it continues to be such a major problem, especially in the West End. And so we hear from a lot of the grandparents about their fears. That's why the, uh, the parents love coming to the Cabbage Patch because uh, they know at least for a few hours, the kiddos are, are very safe here. Um, but, and, and it's just navigating, um, you know, uh, sometimes like we have a parent, right, a grandparent right now, she doesn't have any documentation showing that she has custody of the grandkids. And so we're putting her in touch with an attorney that does pro bono work for us. Um, Cause sometimes, you know, families just don't do it through family court and whatnot. It's just the, the grandparent ends up being the, the most stable person in the family and takes the kids in. So, um, and then also health concerns for the, the grandparents, you know, and, and so they don't have as much of energy as they did when they were younger. And then they're having to navigate their doctor appointments and other things too. So, but it, it's unfortunately growing um, and, you know, drug problems and whatnot, you know, we can't tell you how many of the, the parents, um, the grandparents are taking care of the kids because they're, they're grown children. And that's the other thing too, is they're struggling with grief. Um, you know, over their grown children, you know, are, are really just not doing what they wish they were doing. So, Calvin, did you, what did you think? I would say the same thing, especially the legal part. We've been seeing that a lot of yeah. grandparents because they didn't go through the courts, just, hey, they have the kids, but they can't get any assistance or help because yeah. they don't have proof or they don't have the social security cards or yeah. so it just creates a lot of barriers and problems for them. And they're already afraid of this new technology and this, and how do you, you know, how do you navigate through this? And, and as Doug gave an example, we've got a parent that's kind of dealing with that right now with several parents, but one that we're trying to get her some kind of legal help with a, a lady that works with us, an attorney. So, yeah. 
All right, you guys. Um, I guess we want to be cognizant of time. We're right at one o'clock and we can maybe have a few more questions for those who want to continue to add it, but we just want to thank everyone. Um, let them know that this Zoom recording will be available on our website. And so please take a look and share it with people who weren't able to make it today. And our next, our next Zoom experience will be on April the 23rd. And we will look forward to seeing you then. You'll get information about it. So thanks, everyone.